Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I've got a little mod in this box that is going to drastically enhance the low end on a pinball machine. Specifically for the Guns N' Roses pinball machine right behind me. I felt the bass was a little lacking. So with this mod right here, it's gonna sound amazing. So stay tuned. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button. That really helps our odds of getting more views on the video and it really helps the channel grow. So here is what's inside of this box. We have got a 100 watt little micro amp. So this little guy right here is really cool. I've used these on some other projects. In addition to this amplifier, you're going to need three other things. First is a high level to low level converter. So basically this takes your speaker outputs and turns it into RCA line level. So you'll need that. And you'll need a short RCA cable to go from the converter to the amplifier. So I just happen to have this longer one laying around. Any length will do but I like to I'll probably order like a foot long one just to keep it nice and neat in the, in the game. So there's that. And the last thing you will need is about a foot and a half worth of speaker cable. This is just standard gauge speaker cable that you would use for a car stereo or home stereo. And that is all that you need. So one of the cool things about this amp is that you have an adjustable subwoofer control right here. And this lets you uh, dial in the amount of crossover frequency you want. Now I have mine set for about 11 o'clock on there and that gives me a nice mid to low bass response for that subwoofer. And then this is your volume. I find about 11 o'clock on the dial here is a good blend for me, uh, for my taste. Now your taste might vary and you might want to turn it up a, a bit or turn it down a bit. So it's up to you, you'll have to play around with that. And then I would recommend leaving the sub, the switch between full range and sub, leave that to sub. And then uh, your power switch can stay on. Uh, it doesn't really draw any power or you can shut it off every time you run the game. I have this plugged into the service port in the game and it just stays on. And then another closer look on the back here, we've got our RCA line level inputs and then our speaker outputs and then our power. And there's the power adapter. And this just plugs right into the uh, service port on the game. So let's get this installed. So I'm sure some of you know that have been following my channel and some don't, but I actually own a recording studio and I do audio full time as my main source of income. So I'm gonna take a kind of a scientific approach instead of, oh, it sounds better, but you can't really tell on a TV or a phone speaker system. So what I'm going to do is this is a audio measurement microphone. This is what they use to calculate sound waves in a room, uh, take specific measurements of speaker responses. So we're actually gonna be taking the speaker response of the factory amp and then the mod and you can see for yourself on a, on a chart how much uh, increase there is in the low end response and where too. Um, so I don't think I've seen anybody else do this on YouTube. So uh, as far as the pinball machine goes, as far as actually running a chart on it, but we're gonna do that because why not? So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is I'm using a soldering iron right here. So you could use wire cutters if you're not handy with soldering, but you want to remove the leads from the speakers from the amplifier. So we're gonna remove the wires here. Okay, now that we're done with that, next step is we're gonna connect the line level adapter. So on this boss, this is a line level adapter which takes the speaker level and converts it to a line out level. Now these are trim adjustments. So we're gonna be running this in mono. So what I've done, I've just turned the trim adjustments all the way up and then you've got, this would normally be for your left channel, this would be your right channel, but we're tying them together. 
So one side of the of these cables have a white stripe on them. So you tie both of those together, that is your negative. And this one with no stripe is your positive. So what we're going to do is attach the speaker wires that went to the speaker to these guys. And then um, we'll move on to the next step. So one of the things that I wanted to mention, if you're not comfortable with soldering, you can use like a connector like this, a crimp connector and crimp the two lines together. And then when you re connect the new speaker wire to the speaker, you can use a current connector very similar to this. I myself, I'm good at soldering, so I'm gonna do everything using the soldering method, but don't be afraid to uh, use these guys if, if you're not comfortable with soldering. So we're gonna twist our wires together. Remember the stripe side goes to the negative. We'll just bring these together. solder on there. To the other side. Okay, and then I've got my heat shrink already on here, so I'll just slide that down on there. So once you've got your heat shrink on, you just use your soldering iron to uh, shrink the tubing. Or you could use like a lighter or a heat gun. I just use the soldering iron because it's right here and it's hot and ready to go. So the next thing we're gonna do is attach our speaker wire to the speaker. Now, remember the speaker has a little dot next to one terminal to let you know that it's the red is the positive for the speaker. So what I'm gonna do with these wires here, I'm gonna use the yellow as my positive. So all I need to do is just solder onto the speaker terminals and we are done with that step. Also, if you're not comfortable soldering, you can always use one of these guys, slide that in there, crimp it on there, and just plug it right onto the speaker terminal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and attach. And that is it for that step. So, the rest is fairly easy. We're just gonna plug everything into the amplifier. Okay, for the last thing, we're gonna go ahead and hook up our speaker terminals to the back of the, uh, the amp. So I've included links in the description below for the amp and the line level converter. If you do use those links, that actually is tied to my Amazon affiliate program. So if you order from those links down in the description below, that helps out the channel and helps grow the channel. So we're just gonna put our positive to the positive terminal and then our negative to the negative and just screw them down. Okay, that's tight. Next thing we're gonna do is grab our RCA cable and we're gonna plug it in. Red to right and black to left doesn't really matter because we're running in mono anyways. What I had planned to do is put a little piece of Velcro right here and the amp would live about right there in the game. Nice and tucked in out of the way. And then the last thing is install the power supply to the service port. Most games do have service ports and they're located right there. And it's just a plug outlet. Plug that guy in, you'll see it lights up. And then we will plug this guy in. And that is it. Speaker is active. So one other thing on this sub-frequency adjustment, this is a crossover. So if you guys don't know what a crossover is, basically it filters out high frequencies and only allows low frequencies to come through on this particular one. So if I have it all the way up, it allows a lot of the mid-range to come through, and that 
through a subwoofer usually does not sound good. So what that does is when I bring it to the left, it starts taking out those high frequencies and only allows the low frequencies to pass through so you have a cleaner signal and a cleaner sound coming out of your subwoofer. So again, as I had mentioned earlier, about 11 o'clock is a good crossover point for me and about 11 o'clock on the volume knob. And leave your switch in the sub position, turn it on and you're ready to go. So for our test, we are gonna be pointing the measurement microphone about a foot and a half away from the speaker at the underside of the cabinet. So the first thing we're going to do is gonna to go to the test mode, go to sound, and there is a low tone. So we're gonna play that with the stock speaker. And actually, I'm also going to put the volume at. So the volume is at 20. I'm gonna leave it there. So this is the stock speaker. And this is the same speaker with the amplifier mod and the crossover set to about 120 hertz. So let's examine this a little bit closer. If you look, see on the screen, you'll see a big difference in the low end hump on the graph here. So again, this is the stock speaker with stock amplification. And over here is the same speaker with the amp mod. You can see there's quite a bit of difference. On the amp mod, I only have the volume about halfway. It has more to go, but I didn't want to overpower it with low end and everything will start shaking if I crank it up. It's a nice increase from the stock setup as far as the low end response for this game. So what'd you guys think? I, I mean, it, I think it made a huge difference. Um, I thought the amp that came with the Guns N' Roses on the, the factory board there was just weak on the low end and there's no EQ adjustment like there is on Stern machines. So until they can get that sorted out with the programming, I think this is a great option to add extra low end without having to go to an external sub or a whole new speaker system. And also you can use this amp on other pinball machines or make sure you've got upgraded speakers like from Flipper Fidelity or Pinball Pro or you know, there's several other companies out there. Um, I wouldn't recommend it on a stock speaker system uh, unless you've got a really good sized magnet because the 100 watts this amp is putting out could pop that speaker and we don't want that. So thanks for watching and keep flipping.